Hey guys, it's Igor from Inspire to Make. I'm here at the Ryerson University engineering basement dungeon thing where they're basically making awesome robots. So I'm here with Omar Sharif and he is uh, working here. Omar, can you show us around this place? Absolutely, let's go for a little tour. So starting off over here, we have uh, the, the place is divided into two rooms and our first room here is where we have the larger teams and I say larger as in they make larger things. So this is the Formula Racing team. They make a Formula Racing car of course. This is their current car for this year's competition and I think they've recently come back a few weeks ago from one of their bigger competitions. So yeah, they do a really awesome job at making a very lightweight, very fast and very good at turning race car. So moving on a little bit further is the Baja team. So very similar idea, it's a race, you want to go as fast as possible, but it's all off-road. So this is their current Baja car for the year. You can see it's been through quite a lot already. I believe they take it in snow, of course they take it in mud. Uh, they flip this thing, they roll over, they push it back over and they continue going. So very different type of race, but very fun, I'm, very, I'm sure. So the last team in this room is the concrete toboggan team. And this is one of their older toboggans. So the idea is that you make a toboggan with concrete skids. Uh, they are civil engineers, so concrete is what they do. And uh, they make uh, their own special blend in sort of special concrete that's supposed to be as slippery as possible and still withstand all the loads and weights and forces that a uh, toboggan would have to. So they actually load up a bunch of people in here. They go down a massive hill somewhere, I believe in Quebec. And then at the very bottom, they pull the brakes and hopefully no one dies. So yeah, there is a giant piston at the bottom that kind of stabs out. Actually, you can see these kind of shovels down here. Those just dig into the ground and stop in the snow. So yeah, they're crazy. I would never get in this. I value my life. <laughs> but they do an awesome job and it does have steering too. So yeah, also a race, but it's a straight line. On this side, we have the other teams in Ryerson. So we have the robotics team over here. In the middle, we have the uh, rocketry team. So they make rockets that go very high, I don't know how high exactly, and then they come back down. And we have the Supermage team just behind the cabinets. So I'm part of the robotics team, we build a Mars rover, we build a submarine, we have smaller VEX robots for our new students before they graduate up to the Mars, to the Mars rover team. And uh, we make awesome things here. So look around, yeah. <music> Omar Sheriff, he is a creator behind this amazing machine, DMC1 CNC. It's a funny way how I met him. Uh, I saw his Instagram ad. He's making a Kickstarter on this machine. Man, I gotta say, this is fucking amazing. There's five days left. Four. Four days left for Kickstarter. So. For, the, for the Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah. If you want really this machine to happen, you really have to check the links in the description and just act now. Otherwise, it's not going to become a reality. This machine is amazing. Like, can you tell me more about this contraption? So yeah, this is the DMC-1 CNC. This is what you're getting if you buy the, uh, the kit or the assembled version. The assembled, of course, will look like this. The kit is a box of parts that you'll assemble yourself. It's a lot of fun. I would get the kit if I was you. So yeah, here's your CNC. Um, the top has this clear cover on it. So you pull that off and then inside you have everything exposed. So you have a vise, four inch vise and you have the bed where you can mount your parts to however you choose. So it does have threaded holes. It makes it a lot easier to mount whatever weird shapes or plates or whatever material you want. How big is the working area on, a, on this machine? Okay, so the working area on the machine is gonna be about 12 inches in the Y direction, uh, eight inches in the X and about 5.4 or 5.5 in the Z. So your spindle of the machine is up here and a lot of people at first think, oh, it's another wood router kind of set up. No, actually it is not. So actually in the past, I have experimented with wood routers on CNC's and you'll see that in a lot of other common desktop CNC's and they're horrible. I cannot not recommend that enough. So the problem with wood routers is you have a small bearing at the bottom, an even smaller bearing at the top, and they are not meant for cutting metal and taking heavy loads. This guy here is a actual spindle made for CNC machining. So it has a double bearing, really huge bearings actually, double bearings at the bottom and at the top. Uh, it's a lot quieter and it's an AC induction motor, so it's a lot smoother and, and nicer. Also, if you stall this guy... Go and ask him to... Hey bro, we're, we're filming something. Do you mind like... 
keep me down for like a few minutes? Few minutes. Yeah, maybe like 10, 10, 15. That's cool. All right. Sorry. So right now, we're gonna try make a test cut on this machine. We're gonna cut my logo out of this chunk of aluminum. It will be like a branding iron or something. This is a game changer. Look at this. So this machine can cut plastic, can cut aluminum, and also in stainless steel. Look at this. Okay, so these parts here you see are actually uh, cold rolled, or sorry, hot rolled steel. And there's some scrap plate I had lying around. So what you're looking at here is just kind of me messing around with a four millimeter end mill doing some speeds and feeds. So that anytime you start a new material, you want to figure out what's a good recipe to cut. Otherwise you'll end up with another uh, broken end mill. So that's that. Once I figure that out, I can move on to this guy. This is a steel tow hook out of the exact same material. So it was cut with little tabs that held it on, and then that's the finished result. So once you pull it out, you file your tabs off a little bit, and there you go. This is straight off the machine with no post-processing. How long did it take to mill this? So this part probably took around 15 minutes in total to mill with a four millimeter end mill. So these are the hot rolled steel plate, and this guy here, this is a bottle opener. So this is cold rolled steel, which is a little bit harder, a little bit stronger than hot rolled, and a little more difficult to machine, of course. So that's a little bottle opener with the logo made into it. Probably took, uh, I would say maybe about 10 minutes on each side, probably less than that, but you know, in total, maybe under an hour to do this whole part, because you do need to flip the part, you do need to grab it again in the vise, reprobe it. Okay, so a lot of people were asking me, can the DMC1 do steel and stainless steel? And the short answer is yes, you can. The work that you see here was probably done in about maybe less than 10 minutes. So very small step overs. Uh, you can kind of see the lines in the circles of how far I was stepping over. Probably like a 0.2 millimeter or something like that. And then when I went to the middle, that was full slotting, full uh, 1 8 width of the end mill going straight through. So that's where it overheated and snapped, as you can clearly see right where the end mill broke. I see this cool arm, it's a robotic arm. Can you tell me more about this arm? Uh, what are you de originally designed for? Okay, so this is a robotic arm that I built uh, entirely on the DMC1 CNC. And I did it pretty much just for fun and to show off what I can do on the CNC. So of course I have my own logos and everything on that. Yes, yeah, so everything on this is aluminum. There is one steel part somewhere inside. There's a collar that goes on the shaft for the NEMA 24. And there is a few plastic parts. How fast it can stub people? Okay, so if you want to know specs on the arm, the bigger motor you put on, the faster it'll go, the more torque it'll have. But you do have to keep in mind that current, inductance, things like that will affect your, your output speed. So the limit is up to you, really. How, how crazy are you willing to go? Are you going to get the biggest, beefiest motor or something affordable? <laughs> Check out the link to the Kickstarter campaign in the description. Uh, please, 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 we really need your help to make this machine a reality. There is only like a few days left, otherwise it's only a prototype. It will never hit the market. And it's a f***ing amazing machine. You should have one. Your aunt should have one. Your dog should have another one. Maybe with like a different functionality. Click the link and check out the Kickstarter campaign. Hey guys, and here's the results of the giveaway I made in the last video. The winner is... It's right here, yeah. It's right here on the screen. Yeah, right here. 